Things. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> I'm Alana, and I like to make things. If you're anything like me, and if you sometimes make your own clothes, then usually it's like the middle of summer, and you're like, oh my gosh, I should make some summer dresses, and then you buy the fabric, and then you never finish the project. Just me? Maybe? Anyway, so last summer, I bought a bunch of fabrics for some summer dresses that I never ever made. So we're getting ahead of the game this year, or technically behind the game from like a year ago. But anyway, I found this really cute polka dot bed sheet from Value Village. And I was like, this would make an awfully cute wrap dress. So that's what I'm going to be... What the hell are you doing? I'm so sorry, I was trying not to sneeze. So, <laughs> uh, so that is the plan for today. Um, so basically, what I'm going to do first is I want to make a cover for my dress form because it's adjustable and I can't pin into it. It's not like super close to my size. So I'm going to be using the Bootstrap Fashions like DIY dress form cover pattern. And so I have this canvas here that I'm going to make a cover for it. And then I can just drape the pattern right on the dress form. Uh, so that is what I think the plan is. Um, so first things first, make dress form cover. Might not film that part because, you know, other people have done it much more cohesively than I would be able to. And then next, wrap dress. Once my dress form was adjusted to my measurements, I could start draping. I really have no idea how to do this properly. I just slapped and pinned fabric onto old Cynthia until I had a shape similar to what I wanted. I find a familiarity with how clothing is typically constructed to be really important when making our own. So looking at patterns and other finished garments is a really good way to learn how to drape fabric and make your own patterns. I followed some of the seam lines on the dress form, such as the side seams and bust seams, to get an idea of where to place my darts and seams, and I used the waist tape to mark where I wanted the bodice to end. I trimmed away any excess fabric and marked my lines with permanent marker. Okay, so I just draped this piece and cut it out and I pinned the one dart and oh my gosh, <laughs> having a dress form that is your size is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Um, so the only thing that I think is kind of wonky is the shoulder seam here and really I think if I just take off this little triangle, it should be fine. So what the heck. Um, that was fantastic. Oh yeah, did I mention that I finished the dress form? I don't think I did, but it's finished and I love her. Her name is Cynthia. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Let's uh, make a dress. I cleaned up the lines of my draped fabric and repeated the process for the back dress piece. Again, I added two darts at the back and used the back seams of the form to get them straight and symmetrical. I then transferred the draped pieces to some wrapping paper to create more precise pattern pieces. I didn't add seam allowance here, but if I were to redo this project, I would have added them to the paper pattern. I used a ruler to clean up the straight lines and just did my best with the curved lines because I don't have a French curve. You can also use like round things like mugs or saucers or anything, um, but I just eyeballed it. Then I snipped a hole at the top of the darts to make it easier to transfer them to the fabric.
I made a quick mock-up of the top part and the fit is really good. I think the arm side needs to be a little bit uh, like bigger. Um, it's a little tight right on my armpit. And the neck in the back, which is, I can't show you because I don't bend that way. But uh, I think it's a little bit high as well. And I think this is a little bit high, so I'm going to, going to make those little changes and then I can move along with the actual fabric. Here's a little bit of a better look at the changes that I made to the original pattern. So the striped paper underneath is the original. So I took off a lot of width from the shoulder. I took off so much from the the neck. It was uh, it was something else. <laughs> and for the front pieces, um, I didn't make as many changes. Just again, a little bit of width from the shoulder, and I shaved off a little bit um, from the front, like slope there. So I'm going to trim up these patterns, and then I'm going to. I would like to line the top if I have some sort of fabric with which to line it. Um, if I have enough, I could just make it the gray doubled over. Um, if I don't, I'm sure I have like white something in my stash. Um, so yeah, the top, I'm gonna cut out two of these pieces in the gray, two in the lining, ditto here. And then the skirt is just gonna be a long rectangle that I'm gonna gather down and then I need to save enough for the little straps. Um, so I'm going to do that right now. So here I am cutting out the bodice pieces. I cut out two front pieces and one back piece on the fold. I marked along the edges with a heat erasable pen and added some seam allowance when I cut out the pieces. Then I could prepare the pieces by sewing the darts. I lined them up and sewed them and then tied the thread tails together at the tip of the dart to make sure they wouldn't come undone. Okay, for the sleeve, I cut out like a typical S-curve sleeve top. Normally it would kind of taper in here, but I want these sleeves to be kind of like fluttery. So I just brought it out on an angle here and then kind of rounded it out. This is just like what I'm gonna use to see if the sleeve pattern like fits, um, but I'm gonna give it a try now. So it looks like this pattern should be good. I'll probably have to gather um, some of the excess fabric at the top, but ain't, I got no problem with a gathered sleeve. So that is what we will do next. I cut out two sleeve pieces on the fold, adding some seam allowance at the top and bottom for the sleeve setting and the hem. I then began working on the ties that will wrap around the waist and keep the dress closed. They're just two long strips of fabric folded in half and sewn right sides together, then turned right sides out with a safety pin. I ironed these pieces flat once they were right sides out. They would be sewn in between the outer and lining bodice layers. Apparently I'd already sewn together the bodice pieces and just didn't record it, which is great. But basically, I sewed the outer fabrics and lining fabrics together, then laid them on top of each other, right sides together. Okay, I've been working on other things because I'm confused about what to do next. So basically, the bodice is all sewn together. Um, well, like the front and the, and the backs are sewn together. Um, so the facing fabric, like the fashion fabric, is laid on top of the lining fabric right now. And I'm like, <laughs> what sides do I sew, like what edges do I sew together right now? Because I can't sew in the sleeves yet, 
until the shoulders are together, but I can't sew the shoulders together until the bodice is like put together, is that right? So all I can think of right now is that I could sew the front, or like, yeah, the v-neck part together on both sides, and I can't sew the bottom edge together yet because I want to sandwich it around the skirt, so I <laughs> just like have had this sitting on my floor for like an hour <laughs> while I did other things, and I don't know what to do. Um, so I might have to put it on the dress form so I can like think in 3D, but I'll let you know when I figure out what the heck I'm doing. So I think I did the right thing, <laughs> which is shocking. So basically what I did is I sewed the lining to the front fabric, facing fabric, um, at the front, you know, V portion and at the neck, I left the arm size open and the shoulder seams open. This is just pinned together right now so I could slap it on and see what the heck is going on. Um, so now I think I have to sew the outer sleeve fabric together and then the inner sleeve fabric together and then I can sew, or so, sorry, outer shoulder, inner shoulder, and then I can sew the sleeves in to the outer fabric layer and then hand sew the lining fabric at this point. I think. We'll see what happens. That sounds right though. Let's do that. Instead of that, it looks like I then decided to understitch the front V opening, which is when you fold the seam allowance towards the lining and sew it down pretty close to the original seam. This keeps the lining fabric from moving and peeking out around the outer fabric. And then it looks like I moved on to pockets. I basically eyeball pocket pieces every time I make them, keeping one edge straight to be inserted into the seam, rounding out the opposite edge, extending the top up quite a ways so it can be sewn into the waistband, and making sure it's big enough to hold all of my stuff. Ah, back to sleeves. I gathered the top of it down to make it puff and fit into the arm side, then pinned and sewed it to the shoulder. Can you hear how voiceover me has no idea what past me was doing? I'm like, why don't you just work linearly and just do the stuff you said you were going to do? But past me can't hear. She just does what she wants. I could for sure edit it so it looks more like I know what I'm doing, but this is more accurate to how I actually work. I think my sewing alignment definitely has some chaotic energy. But yeah, about the sleeves. <laughs> so I lined up the side bodice seam and the sleeve seam and then just gathered the puff until it fit snugly into the sleeve hole. Pin and sew. And with that, it looks like we're back to pockets. I sewed them right sides together to the corresponding skirt pieces, but I actually ended up redoing the skirt, so don't read too much into this footage. At least I ironed the seams, so I was doing something right. Okay, here's what we have going on right now. I have laid the skirt part over top of the bodice part, right sides together, um, and I have sewn three gathering threads into the top of the skirt. Um, basically, one for each segment, so in between the seams. Um, so what I'm going to do is pin the side seam with a pocket to the side seam of the bodice and then gather down each section to fit into the bodice sections, if that makes any sense at all. So let's do that now. I had to take apart the skirt for the dress because it was way too much fabric and it was like really bulky. Um, so basically my, pl my plan now is I have it, the fabric is split into three sections um, and I'm going to use what I have and hopefully I can make it into a half circle skirt but it will also be cut into segments. Um, so that is the plan. That's the whole sentence. Um, so I'm gonna try and make a 
half circle skirt now with the leftover fabric and then have unfortunately I have to redo the whole skirt but I think it'll be better it's just it was way too poofy it looked like a little kid's like wedding dress like what a bridesmaid would wear so I'm gonna redo it I meant flower girl not bridesmaid okay a little bit of an update so I didn't actually have enough fabric I think to do a half circle skirt so I'm going to do a quarter circle skirt and I'm going to add a little bit extra width on the side so that I can still um, either serge or French seam it and I'm going to make it a little wider at the top there actually I'm probably gonna have to move this down oh well it moved all the fabric but you get the idea I'm gonna move the top of this down so that I can make this side a little bit longer so it can cover the wrap front and so I'm not like just flashing everybody <laughs> um, so yeah I'm gonna cut out this two so I have two pieces laid over top of each other so I'm going to cut out two pieces of that so this is a quarter circle skirt pattern that I have folded in half and then folded in half again um, so that'll make the front two panels um, where the wrap front closure happens and then I'm gonna unfold this once and I have another piece of fabric that I will so I'll cut this shape out again with a little bit of extra space on both sides for seam allowance um, and then sew that back together and sew it to the bodice okay so I'm going to be sewing the side seams together with French seams so what I've done is I pinned the pocket piece to the corresponding skirt pieces wrong sides together I've trimmed the seam allowance um, down up until um, the pocket ends so you know it was like double this and then trimmed it down to half and now I'm going to flip this seam open and iron it flat and then again sew down that seam and then we'll we will repeat that with the actual skirt pieces so lay the skirt pieces down over top of each other and sew around the pocket um, but like first wrong sides together and then right sides together and then everything should be encased in a French seam. I've never done side seam pocket French seams before so this is what I'm hoping. I'm hoping this works because otherwise I'm a little bit screwed. After the pockets were French seamed to the skirt pieces, I ironed the French seam slash seam allowance towards the pocket bag. Then I laid the skirt pieces on top of each other with pockets out and wrong sides together and pinned along the outside of the pocket and down the skirt seam. Now I have both pockets pinned, so I'm just going to sew around everywhere that I've pinned with a fairly narrow seam allowance and then again trim that down to about half a centimeter. And once I get to this corner point, I'm just going to put the needle into the fabric, pivot, and then continue going along. After it's sewn, I'll cut a little slit here um, so the pocket can move freely and then flip everything inside out, iron it, and sew again with a wider seam allowance. Um, then we sewed the pocket um, and this will make sure that the opening is kind of hidden um, by the side seam. After that, I'm gonna deal with um, making it not like a huge like foot long pocket opening, but I'm gonna do that after um, it, like the seam is sewn together. All right, so the side seams have been sewn up. So the French seams are now done. Um, yeah, this is how everything's looking. So everything's just nice and clean inside. I have gone and sewn up into the pocket a little bit to kind of close off the opening. And then also did the same thing at the top here with a little back stitch to make sure the pocket opening is really sturdy. And then to close up the top of the seam. And as usual, what I do with my pockets is I sew the top of them to the skirt so I kind of fold them like towards the front of the body and then sew it to the top of the skirt 
and then when this is sewn into the bodice it's just like an extra security measure to make sure that there's a lot of support for whatever crap you have in your pockets. So with that said, um, now I can sew the skirt back to the bodice <laughs> and then repeat all those steps that I already finished. So we're in the end game again. All right, this is the state of the dress right now. So, um, sorry, my cat wants to go outside, so she's crying at me. Um, basically, I think this is like a little too, I don't know, the shoulder seam is too far forward. So I think I'm going to have to like put a dart or something or like fix it so that it sits a little bit more flat um, in the front. But uh, that I could do fairly easily. So right now I have to chop off some of the hem because it's like a little bit longer in the front than it is in the back, but that's totally fine. It'll be a nice length when it's done. Um, so yeah, pockets are done. Everything is stitched in. I slip stitched the lining, uh, the bodice lining to the bodice front. Um, right now it kind of looks like a graduation gown or something. Like it's just kind of like big gray blech. So I think what I'm going to do is after I cut off the bottom of the skirt, I'm going to make little cuffs and then turn these sleeves into like a gathered bottom puff sleeve. Sorry. So I think that'll look a little bit cuter and less like, I don't know, like a wizard's robe. <laughs> so that's my plan. So yeah, cut off the bottom, make some cuffs for the sleeves, and I'm gonna iron this down because it's kind of like wrinkling a little bit, and then I'll see about um, taking in the shoulders here so that it sits a little bit uh, more flat. And then I'm gonna leave it to hang um, on my dress form so that the skirt can stretch out where it's cut on the bias, and then hem the bottom and then she'll be done. Okay, don't mind my other unfinished in, prog in progress project right now. Um, but yeah, I took in a little bit at the shoulder seam and then I added the cuff to the bottom of the sleeves. I think it looks so much cuter now, which is great. So now the only thing left to do is probably swap out these two things and hang let the skirt or let this dress hang up um, for a probably the rest of the day and then make sure the hem is level and then I can just hem it up which is going to be just a really quick running stitch actually I'll probably do it on the machine so yeah um, just double double fold the hem and it'll be done so yes today is finish all of your unfinished projects day so I have two more dresses to finish and then this but you don't care about that because this is a video about this dress so it's almost done. There we go the dress is finished. I ended up tacking down the skirt layers to each other so they wouldn't blow open and for the ties I sewed a little buttonhole for one of the tails to go through. It maybe looks like a little bit of a hospital gown but like a cute hospital gown so We'll call it a win. Thanks for watching.